Hey guys, welcome back to World of Warships. Today we're taking a look at the Kerr First in 2024. We're finally getting on to the coal battleships here, and we're going to start with the GK, as this is the only tier 10 battleship available for coal at the moment. So this is going to be the best one to get? Well, we'll see. But let's talk about what makes GK special. This ship used to be the tier 10 of the German battleship line. They did switch it out for Preussen a little while ago, though. And the key differences there between the two ships are really going to be down to the main guns. This ship gets 12 guns instead of 8, which is really nice for consistency. Although with the Preussen, they did give you a very nice reload and they upped the caliber up to 457s. So GK having what is essentially 406 mil guns, I know it has another option for 420, but when it comes to overmatch, which is really what gun caliber mostly comes down to, it's a little bit lacking. That overmatch is really, really nice at tier 10 for dealing with cruisers especially. And that reload on the Preussen makes it feel a little bit like Republic. That's almost Republic reload with a similar amount of guns and overmatch. So that's where the Preussen is very nice to use. That said though, I'm a bit of a hater for small gun count battleships. Six gun battleships I almost don't play just because I do not like their inconsistency. So going from eight up to 12 guns should help our consistency, and it actually does. I find that Kerr First does a better job at dealing with broadside ships than the Preussen does. Sure, we're lacking the overmatch when people are angled, but for the most part, if you're getting those broadside hits, Kerr First should be hitting a little bit harder. The consistency of 12 guns just helps it out quite a bit there. As for which guns I would recommend, I pretty much always use the bigger guns, and it really just comes down to wanting more alpha damage. And as I've used heavy AP more and more since that one came out for the commander build on some other battleships, it's really made me realize how much I value alpha damage over even things like reload. I value accuracy and alpha damage most highly on battleships. So for me, that's where I go with these bigger caliber guns. The smaller ones can be good too, the extra reload you gain there is very, very nice to have. Especially if you're at closer range where the slight pen differences don't matter quite as much. But I do prefer these larger guns. They also have the Yamato gun sound for some reason, uh, so the sound does change. Broadside Ibuki, and that is a dev strike. GK out here dev striking people in 2024, that's right. This ship is a bit of a menace still, even if I do personally feel like it's been a little bit power crept. Uh, the guns can still do some nice work with the armor piercing here. You're really not gonna use the HE all that much, even though it does have quarter pen. I think the AP is really where you wanna stick. Secondaries though are very interesting because this was kind of the original ship to bring secondaries and a long range powerful secondary ship into the game at tier 10. And it's changed a lot over the years, but what you need to know is the maximum range, if you fully build for it, is 12 and a half kilometers. Very, very long range. And they have slightly improved accuracy. The main line or the standard German battleships are about halfway between a standard battleship in terms of secondary dispersion and something like a Schlieffen or an Ohio, which have very accurate secondaries. So they're going to do a little bit better, but uh, really not all that amazing accuracy wise, especially if you've played a Schlieffen before. But you know, we're getting some hits in here on the Hanover. Uh, when it comes to that secondary DPM though, that's again where this ship's been a little power crept, a little bit left by the wayside. Schlieffen has 56,000 secondary hitting DPM at 10 kilometers. I'm using a third party website that kind of takes into account some of the accuracy of these secondaries and gives you a bit of an estimate of the hitting DPM. It uses the same calculations though, taking into account the accuracy of the gun. So we'll see what GK has, right? Well, GK is a little ways down at 32,000. So not quite, but a little bit over half the secondary hitting DPM that a Schlieffen has, which is not great. It also places it around 15th out of 28 tier 10 battleships, so pretty low down. Although they do pen 32 millimeters. That's the special gimmick here is you get 32 mil pen by default. You don't have to take IFHE like you would on a Schlieffen and on things like an Ohio, you don't even have the option to have IFHE and pen 32 millimeters. So that's the power there. But it really means that I don't recommend running a full secondary build. Don't worry, I tried it and I have some clips to show you later on. 
but I would recommend a build more like the one I used in this game, where you can see the guns doing some pretty solid work. A hybrid build, one where we do focus mostly on our main guns, but we use a few commander skills to give us manual secondaries and a little bit of extra secondary range. That gives us 11 kilometer secondaries with most of the accuracy upgrades and allows us to take advantage of that 32 mil pen, especially at closer ranges where it's gonna hit a lot more often. Now moving on to something like armor. Well, you might think that's an absolute strength of these German battleships. You get yourself a turtle back, which means you're not gonna get citadeled at close range. You had very thick belt armor as well as very, very good bow armor. So allowing you to mostly auto bounce even 32 mil overmatching battleships at closer ranges. However, I think armor is actually one of the weak points of the Kurfürst and most of the German battleships. These ships take a ton of damage. Sure, you're not getting citadeled, but the way the armor values work on the curve first when it comes to the turtleback, it basically guarantees full pens from battleships. There is no overpenning this thing. You will take full pens, and that combined with another weakness of specifically the curve first, these turret angles. Look at how much broadside I have to show just to shoot this Wisconsin. I'm so poorly angled that if he shoots me and connects with my broadside armor, he's gonna do massive damage and very consistently deal massive damage to me. So I find Kerr first combining those poor turret angles, especially when pushing forward of 46 degrees. That's how much broadside you gotta give. And this armor to be pretty bad. I suppose it could be worse if we had an exposed Citadel. <laughs> very nice to finish off the carrier there. That gets us a Confederate up to 232,000 damage, a dev strike. Very, very nice game. That was the best game I had. Uh, I had some real stinkers too. This was not an easy ship to play. Uh, just to be aware, I've been trying to be fair to this ship, but I don't like GK in 2024. I think it's pretty bad. And a lot of that comes down to the guns and the armor here. This ship just does not have the firepower to make up for this really, really sluggish, poor maneuvering, bad armored battleship. Now moving on, in this game, just to give you some context, this is a full secondary build. This is not something you should run in randoms, but I did want to give you at least a look at what even the legendary upgrade included here for this full secondary build, just to give you an idea of what you can expect with this if you take it into, let's say, ranked games, brawls, anything like that. For me, that's what I'm saving my curve first for and a lot of these secondary builds. So if you're looking at getting this ship or you already have it and you're wondering, how I like to play it. I love the secondaries, it's fun. The brawling is really enjoyable in this game. You just can't really do it in random battles. It's really a bad idea. So I tend to save that for smaller game modes, more specific game modes. But I should also mention some more of the strengths of this ship. We haven't gone through everything yet. You're gonna notice that we have a Hydro. That is a six kilometer Hydro on this ship. Very, very powerful, especially for a ship that wants to be pushing in. I think Ohio is just a much better brawling battleship but a lot of the time that I'm pushing in an Ohio, for example, I am sorely missing having a Hydro. It is so useful. It allows us to spot this gearing and hopefully take him out. He's getting greedy for these few arms race buffs and we do manage to push up and catch him, which this is a great push so far. Uh, I just overcook it in this game, but if I'd played a little smarter, I think this could have gone a little better, but we do manage to catch the gearing here. So far, this is a pretty good play considering the enemy team is kind of stuck behind some islands. You're going to notice that as you play high tier, I'm sure that people play pretty far back and that's what makes GK a little bit rough. So when you're pushing in like this, you do expose yourself as the target of priority, essentially. Nobody's really going to want to shoot at an angled, uh, angled away kiting Montana, for example, or a Yamato or anything staying at the back. I guess these days it'd be Wisconsin, right? sitting at 20 to 24 kilometers, kited away, angled, when there's a curve first pushing in at 15 kilometers. So you're gonna take a lot of focus fire if you decide to play the ship and push in. And you kind of have to, because that's where this ship can really shine. And really only where it shines, I guess. Uh, Mid-range at the most, <laughs> I would say. Anytime I'm at 20 kilometers fighting with a curve first, I always feel like I'm playing the wrong ship and I'm making a mistake because my ship is just not going to do all that much damage. Not only does this ship have those 406s like we mentioned, but it's got some pretty bad dispersion. That's a broadside Des Moines at six kilometers. <laughs> yeah, 
yeah, aiming bug, island stuff, but that's just the reality of the game. Wargaming is not gonna be fixing these bugs, guys. You don't think they'd fix it already if they could, right? Like these bugs are here to stay. So if you're playing a battleship with bad dispersion that needs to push in, that struggles with dispersion already on top of these aiming bugs, yeah, I think you're just asking for a bad time like I'm having here. <laughs> And it really comes down to, this is the simplest way I could put it, okay? Why would you ever push in where you're going to catch someone off guard, like a Des Moines there, where you need one salvo to take him out to make your play worthwhile, when you could sit back at 20 kilometers and have tens, 20 salvos uh, to deal with him over time and not risk your ship over it, right? Why would you ever do that? The math just doesn't add up. In a game like this one, there's no point in risking your ship on one salvo when you could be just slowly, consistently dealing damage a little bit here and there, maybe not getting the best possible salvos, but you're at least not risking your ship so much like I am here on one salvo going your way. And that's really the calculation that's kind of led me to say, I'm not playing these brawling builds in randoms. I really don't want to anymore. I will still every once in a while try and make it work, but they really are reserved for ranked, for brawls, anything that's closer range like that where I can get away with pushing in a little bit more. Notice the damage we're eating to our superstructure. That's the other problem with the armor. I've really mentioned the turtle back here and how it guarantees full pens when we're broadside and we're forced to go broadside because of these poor turret angles. Well, if you do angle, you're gonna be taking 10 to 15,000 damage, maybe 25,000 damage if you're unlucky enough to meet a main, for example when you're angled. So you can't really save yourself much. I mean, do you wanna take 20 to 30K broadsides or 10 to 15K angled superstructure hits? It's up to you, man, but neither of those sound particularly good to me. So in this one, unfortunately only getting one hit in on the Borgone there. Our turrets got taken out a bit there too, since I had taken some upgrades to help keep the secondaries alive. And that, I guess, brings me to another problem with these brawling-focused secondary battleships is you're putting all these commander points, all these upgrades, all of your ship's capabilities in on these secondaries, and what if a few HE shells just happen to destroy all of them? Now all those points? Pretty useless, right? We managed to do 20,000 to that Montana's broadside with a Citadel. That's pretty good, right? Well, he did 25k back to us. <laughs> Not a great trade, especially for a ship where that one has an exposed citadel and we do not. That advantage of Turtleback doesn't exactly always translate into an advantage. Oftentimes it doesn't. Uh, the only times I would say it does is when you're fighting a battleship that is basically guaranteed to take citadels, even then that, that they're not because GK just does struggle so much with dispersion. But things like a Yamato at close range, right, that has a massive citadel, above water citadel, so this should be guaranteed salvos. When you're comparing it to that, I guess old school World of Warships, when Kerr first entered the game, where Montana had a well above water citadel, Yamato had a well above water citadel, cruisers all had very hittable citadels, much, much more 27 mil armor at high tier, very few ships ever had 30 mil armor. GK was a bit of a monster because the ship came in and it did deliver on those promises of you don't take citadels where everything else takes very easy citadels at closer ranges. You have easily the best secondaries in the game. It wasn't even close and hardly anything had 30, 30 millimeters of armor to be bouncing your shells at, uh, at these higher tiers. It would have been just Zhao and I guess Hindenburg, right? Not a lot, not a lot there. Nowadays, lots of 30 mil cruisers. And I don't want to necessarily talk about uh, Overmatch too much because it's a pretty unfortunate mechanic on both sides, but uh, Broadside Smolensks, yeah, that's a little bit rough. <laughs> and I guess the point I'm trying to get at here is GK was released a long time ago and the game has changed a lot since then and GK has not really kept up with the times. It was released into a very, very different game where even then brawling was done, but not really the most meta-defining thing. There was still a lot of mid-range combat back then. 
And I think the, it's safe to say the game has only got more passive over time. And 2024 especially, it feels like we've certainly seen an acceleration of that in the last few years. Super ships certainly, but even modern tier 10s having much more range, much better DPM at those ranges, much easier to uh, hit things at ranges where, where shell velocity is much better. Better concealment, I mean, better armor because you have no armor, so you just take overpens. It's it's a very different game. So if you're wondering, I do not recommend GK at all, in fact. I think you should really stay away from this ship. There are much, much better ships that you could be getting for coal, especially now that we've taken a look at the uh, cruisers still. Um, something like a Napoli fulfills that secondary brawling thing because it's borderline overpowered and that's what it takes to really be a decent brawler battleship or brawler ship in today's meta. With GK, it's just free damage. Anytime I see one, and I think for a lot of you who love to farm damage and get high numbers like that, anytime you see a GK, especially one that's a secondary build that's trying to push in, you're just licking your lips. That is just easy, easy damage, easy XP to farm, and you're just laughing because why on earth would you be doing that, gifting someone free damage like that? Uh, as for builds, though, if you do want to run this thing in randoms, honestly, I might even recommend it not a hybrid build. Just go full tank. Seriously, I, I don't really think you're going to get much value out of those secondaries at all. Just go full tank. Honestly, you might even want to run range mod. It's it's that rough these days sometimes. You only get 20.6 kilometers of range. And I know, only 20.6? Are we serious? Is that really the meta we're in? And I think it is. Where 20 kilometers of range on a second on a German battleship is not great because everybody likes to sit a little further than that. And it's it's rough to play, man. Although for me personally, I'm a little bit delusional and try to make these secondary brawlers work even in random battles every once in a while. So I still will probably stick with these upgrades. I might even swap over to propulsion mod here and there. Um, but I would actually change my commander. I wouldn't do this necessarily. What I would do is I would give up fire prevention and improved repair party readiness and I would get something like long range secondaries and manual secondaries. So swap these two out for these two and I would try to time a push where I'm not reliant on fire prevention, but I can use my healing to keep myself relatively healthy until the mid to late game when I can use those secondaries. I mean, it's pretty helpful, let's be honest, to make that work. Uh, if you want to go full brawler build, though, it is pretty fun to take it into brawls or ranked and that and take close quarters combat. That could be fun as well with that full secondary build. And then you could run something like the legendary upgrade. That's a lot of investment into one pretty mediocre to bad coal ship. But the legendary upgrade here does give us 10% to our main gun reload. So 2% worse than uh, the reload mod. But it also gives us 15% secondary battery reload. Although at the cost of range. So random battles, that's not going to work out too well. But if you can get into brawling range, it's pretty fun. The other aspect of this legendary upgrade that kind of flies under the radar is you don't have the penalty of turret traverse speed where the main guns here, they turn pretty slowly with the main battery upgrade, 36.8, not the fastest. That includes an improved um, turret traverse upgrade here, grease the gears. So pretty slow turrets when you're just running main battery mod three. So this does speed them up quite a bit as well as giving you those secondaries and main gun reload time as well. And then going uh, secondary battery mod here. Uh, brutal, brutal suggestion that this is the thing here to go secondary mod. <laughs> that's uh, that's borderline mean. <laughs> I guess if you have a GK, you're probably interested in secondaries and they know that. But yeah, I, I do not think this ship plays very well into today's meta, unfortunately. Fun ship in the past, but I think it's best to leave it in the past. Your concealment at best is 14.3, which is fine to pretty decent for a tier 10 battleship of the past. But these days we have much, much better than that. And uh, a lot of the meta relies on that as well. And before I go here, let's just take a look at this very deceiving armor value, <laughs> armor viewer here. Uh, 50 mil plating here, 60, 120 should be absolute beast of a tank when you're bow in. Unfortunately, you got one of the biggest superstructures in the game that just eats full pens for lunch. It is just crazy how much damage this thing takes. And then if you try and angle a little bit like this, well, suddenly you're opening yourself up to take just massive full pens. 
Sure, it's got Turtleback. It's nice to have Turtleback where you just aren't going to get Citadel at closer ranges. But you're just taking full pens where I think I've done... I think the most I've done is upper 40s to a GK before. I've taken over 50,000 damage to my GK when I was flat broadside. Uh, I think I was to a, a clan mate of mine in ranked battles. He was in a Vermont and did like 52,000 damage to my GK. <laughs> did not expect him to uh, be around a corner ready for me. I'll just say that. Uh, but it takes damage, man. Broadside, of course, but even angled, even angled. That said, though, I have left out one redeeming factor of GK. It's not bad at kiting. The firing angle in reverse is actually a 35 degree. So still not amazing, but much better than the 46 when you're pushing forward. So if you're kiting away from people, the turn angles aren't too bad. And you just got to hope people don't know to aim for your superstructure, which most people do at this point. Um, kind of ironic that a German pushing tank brawling battleship with Hydro is at its best when it's kiting away, right? <laughs> Maybe if they swapped around those turret angles so you're worse at kiting and you're better at pushing, you know, incentivizing that playstyle. I don't know. It's just, this ship is just so full of contradictions and weak, weak stuff when it comes to this meta that I do not enjoy playing it and I don't recommend it to you guys. I'm being very strong about this in this video, um, but looking at the rest of the coal battleships coming up, Maybe this is one of the better ones to get. It's it's kind of bleak right now when it comes to the coal battleships that are available, but we'll go through them. Uh, I'll try and do my best uh, to rank them, but just know that if you're looking for any of these closer range pushing brawling ships, just get a Napoli. Just, just get a Napoli. It's so much better, man. Uh, but that's going to do it. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I've been rather forceful with this one i would say more so than a lot of the other videos i've done on some of the other coal and steel premiums that we've taken a look at and i try to be a little bit more like that so you can make up your own mind but i i gotta i gotta say what i think right here i i can't just uh leave it up to your interpretation i gotta be very clear oh i probably should have put this at the start but hey if you're here at the end thanks for watching keep in mind if you're having fun with anything in this game or anything else doesn't matter what some random YouTuber guy says about it. If you're enjoying it, continue to enjoy it, all right? That's not at all what I'm trying to say. I'm not saying you shouldn't enjoy it. But what I'm saying is, if you're looking to get this ship, maybe don't. Thank you very much for watching, and have a great rest of your day.